Thanks, Anand. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Rishi, and uh, I am working with uh, Infosys. I am part of uh, modernization practice. I am an open source uh, evangelist. We have been consuming a lot of open source products and uh, very passionate about uh, contributions also. And uh, we have been working on contributions as well as releasing some of the open source softwares. So I'm very happy to be part of this panel and would like to discuss more. How can we uh, contribute more to the community and we can make uh, open source talk of the town? Over to you. Thanks. Anna. Thanks, Rishabh. Uh, uh, Vinayak, do you want to uh, go next? Sure. Uh, my name is Vinayak Egde. I have about a couple of decades of experience in uh, technical leadership and individual contributor roles. Uh, when it comes to open source, uh, interestingly, um, uh, you know, the name Microsoft doesn't actually uh, gel well uh, with open source. And uh, there was a time, uh, you know, this is my second stint at Microsoft. And the first stint at Microsoft in the early 2000s, I actually worked on a project called uh, Services for Unix, uh, which uh, on, in, interestingly, I was in, in Microsoft and Microsoft was using SFU to, in, in some sense, fight against Linux. And all of my contributions were actually open source. And uh, I worked on uh, BSD user land, uh, all of the developer tools, uh, GCC, GDB, for example. So it was very unique. And uh, last couple of years, now I'm working again at Microsoft, which is a very, very different Microsoft from the early 2000s. Uh, so I have kind of had a you know, uh, ringside view to you know the, the transformation of both Microsoft and the open source system itself. Uh, in the past, uh, when I was working with Immobile, the team that I started uh, have uh, started a couple of Apache uh, projects as well. So I have been contributing as an individual contributor as part of an organization. And um, as part of my job currently at Microsoft, uh, it's not directly related to open source, but I work with startups. And most of the startups actually have their stack on open source. So uh, definitely, there is an element um, of uh, you know uh, of of software that is running on Azure at Microsoft. So at Microsoft, I actually uh, work uh, as a CTO in residence, uh, which is what I help startups actually onboard onto Azure and um, also the rest of the Microsoft ecosystem. Uh, and again, like all, as I said, like almost ninety five percent of them are on uh, you know using open source software and Linux. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about my background. Um, yeah, over to you. Are. Yeah. Thanks, Vinay. Uh, so, uh, I, uh, I think we have a, a, a panelist representing uh, kind of wide variety of industry. We have people working. We have Infosys uh, representing the service industry, and we have uh, uh, Microsoft uh, from the cloud, and uh, uh, the others uh, from uh, kind of SaaS and uh, infrastructure. So, it's. It, I would like to kind of know um, how important is kind of FOSS to your organization and kind of what drives force adoption in the organization and it will be also nice if you can actually start with a slight historic perspective how things were and how things are now that would be great uh uh what start i mean uh, uh, maybe you can start jyoti again sure um how we were a few years back into it was uh had its own data centers. So we were completely private. Everything was our, our, own, our own. We would bring, build our own infrastructure. And, and obviously, as a result of that, there is very little open source contribution or even usage that we used to have from the infrastructure perspective. Applications were there still, but from an infra perspective, it was very, very less. And then today, since we moved over to the public cloud, um, and, and we use AWS very, uh, very exhaustively. We are also using Kubernetes now, and that's where our open, open source uh, journey has completely turned around because now we are using Kubernetes. There are a couple of big time projects as a company that Intuit had acquired Appletics. And as a result of that, there are, there are a couple of these big Kubernetes projects that that were incubated and are actually used by companies like Google as well. A couple of them are uh, are Argo CD as well as the Argo workflow. In fact, it's for the Argo Argo projects the the CNCF Foundation um, awarded into it probably a couple of years back. So so that has been the journey um, from from 
our perspective from the infrastructure perspective it is it is kubernetes and then there are other areas like um, like like testing where we have our our own open source project around um, karate which is called and 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 that's very exhaustively used in the market for for ui performance and 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 web testing as well so those were the were the few areas where we were a little bit behind and then we we are moving progress now the other reason where the progress is happening is the community build out and the focus on having a community for open source and and i personally believe as the engineering leader that it truly makes us better when we are open sourcing it makes engineering better because everybody is aware that when you're contributing your code has to be top notch and and a lot of people are actually looking at it and building on it and therefore i my personal take is that that culture is is helping not only outside community but it also helps us internally as well uh, thanks shoti uh, uh, let's move on to uh, maybe mukund so like hotstar is uh been uh, on the aws cloud for almost day one and uh, uh, but there's a lot of uh, uh, similarities like kubernetes is one of our biggest open source as well but uh, from i think a lot of the hotstar uh, tech stack is built on uh, open source be it uh, redash be it uh, kafka be it uh, we we live on the open source uh, stuff and it's interesting uh, i think similar uh, uh, challenges similar uh, reasons why we pick open source uh, one is we look at how uh, how much of community support exists how much how active is the product how stable it is before we uh, pick the stack uh, for ourselves um, and uh, it's been really uh, it has worked well for hotstar so we don't uh, um there are certain challenges but uh, we always seem to uh, there's no other way in fact uh, open source is a way to go to use it um and customize it for our own uh, needs as well so that's that's been the journey that uh, hotstar has picked up uh, there's been a lot of blogs on the same go cd kubernetes on the hotstar's uh, blogs as well um pretty interesting work has happened there and also um there's been i would say that there's been some contributions and we also want to increase the amount of contributions back to the community but the same uh, uh, we need to keep that bar uh, of the open source community to uh, com- uh, co- contribute back to the open source community that is one of the challenges so because the bar will be high uh, some of the times we customize it for ourselves and we uh, we go ahead um, that's one of the things that we will be changing so Thanks, Mukun. Uh, let's see, uh, Ramesh, do you want to say something about? Sure. Um, uh, probably our journey is very similar to that of Hotstar. We are a born in the cloud company. Uh, we are also born with open source. Uh, our stack ground up is uh, Ruby on Rails and Ember. So, uh, for most of our products, uh, so uh, pretty much uh, I would say most of it is open source. Uh, if you look at it, um, uh, yeah, and. Uh, the journey has been the, the usual journey which typically uh, companies take i would put it in three phases typically there is a use phase where you just use and then there is a contribution phase where you contribute then there's a creation phase where you create right that's a typical journey we go through uh, if you look at uh, a startup like us for the initial years it will be mostly use and as mukund was saying you just take it probably mod- make modification and keep it ourselves because uh, we'll have to be really uh, fast in turning around things and we'll have to be very diligent if you want to contribute to open source probably that uh, may not be the focus initially uh, but then slightly you, you get on to the more mature phase of contributing back uh, because uh, i mean that's when the country, uh, community grows and uh, we are doing that now uh, probably we are in that phase where we are contributing so we have contributed to a lot of cncf projects including kubernetes envoy uh, so we started uh, so we contribute a lot to ember rails so um, especially uh, the, the ones we use the most is where the kind of alignment is and we could uh, do it easily uh, so we have started doing that we have created a few uh, projects now uh, uh, with especially around uh, ember uh, area uh, mostly our design system and uh, 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 some enhancements to the ember framework itself uh, but that's where we are we want to do more uh, as and when the opportunity shows up i'm sure uh, uh, we'll do more 
and we have been kind of uh, uh, pushing folks uh, educating them about open source and freshworks for the last uh, uh, four to five years at least as long as i have been and i'm sure we would want to make progress and uh, uh, love to hear from all of you as to how we can do it together great thanks samesh uh, now let's kind of see uh, how is it different uh, in the service industry at infosys uh thanks anand and uh, yeah i think uh, i want to make a disclaimer first that uh, see being the services industry being part of services industry uh and infosys uh, i am not the authorized representative of the company so i just want to make it uh, that these are the personal views and uh, whatever information i'm going to share these are my personal views and uh, i think definitely we will talk more about the open source so free open source software is extremely important in the services industry i think if you see these unprecedented times where every client is looking for that they want that minimum disruptions should be there to their services and offerings nobody want uh, that there should be any disruption everybody want that all the employees should be able to work continuous i mean should be able to work whatever work they need to deliver they don't want uh, they want to do new things also because a lot of new demands are coming you want to build new services new solutions and you want to strengthen your abilities to innovate when it comes to innovate when it comes to uh, develop the new things you always think about that how can i do it quickly how can i do it with minimum investments and i think uh, open source is the natural choice when you want to make the decisions very fast i see that every layer of the technology stack uh, you see at least one or more products not only one or more i think at least three four products you will find on every layer of the technology stack so it is very much in use when we are going to talk to our client client is going to ask for do we have these these, these expertise and from services industry perspective it is extremely important to build very flexible applications i would like to give you one example here that if you see from the proprietary software perspective proprietary softwares are very expensive and it is very inflexible also generally you cannot integrate things very easily with rest of the world so you end up spending high capital uh, i mean your uh, capex into it and also the vendor lock in could be there like in some of the uh, cases it is up to 15 to 20 years also so no client wants that uh, it should continue they want that uh, they should be able to make the things they they want to uh, change the thing they want to modernize their applications quickly they want that the uh, any software which we want to build today probably uh, in my view that software should be available for large number of people and if you want to do a software for large number of people for example billion uh, users then you cannot do it using the proprietary software because of the huge licensing cost and other reasons so aadhar could be the best example of india where you can see that everything is uh, open source so anand to conclude it i think uh, from services perspective almost all the clients 95% of the clients are using open source nowadays and it is extremely important to have this as a one of the core offerings from your uh, for your enterprise Over thanks rishi uh, yeah yeah let's uh, hear from uh, vinayak and probably the journey of microsoft to open source yeah so as i said like uh, you know i have two perspectives right like early 2000s um, uh, you know mostly when i been even then i was working open source inside microsoft so it was a very unique thing but then i was mostly working with lawyers to make sure that you know i am not in some sense like polluting the source code of uh, that because of the gpl thing but we have come a long way since then right i was i was looking at a presentation recently and i was stunned to know that uh, microsoft internally uh, is using about 5.1 million uh, components that are open source and these are not like different versions of software these are 5.1 million different components it could it could be like small things from uh you know like a, a, a li libraries to compress to write up to like you know big software like kubernetes right uh, so that that is one of the numbers and the way i think microsoft is actually 
engaging with the community and it has come a long way since you know satya narela has taken over it's a profound cultural change uh, is one is to enable uh, you know whatever software is there to run on windows and the other devices and uh, oss we have uh, the second one is to release whatever software we have built internally as open source uh, the few a uh, few well known examples one of them is uh, typescript which was developed by anders uh, anders helsberg Uh, who also uh, uh, for the dinosaurs uh, who are listening in also built like uh, uh, Turbo Pascal if I remember right and uh, also uh, you know some of the early Microsoft uh, C sharp language as well uh, Des dot net core uh, this VS code uh, so there are many of those uh, in terms of uh, partnering we also look at uh, you know like uh, for example we work closely with Red Hat uh, for like you know uh, enabling OpenShift workloads as well. uh so it has it has come a long way right uh, uh so we, there are many examples as well in terms of supporting also you can see that uh, you know for example the uh, you know some of the early contributors to gnome project for example miguel de icaza and uh, nat friedman who's now uh, by the way the ceo of github as well work for microsoft um uh, uh, i think jyoti and mukund mentioned kubernetes right uh, brendan burns who uh, you know worked on the some of the early versions and still continues to work on kubernetes is now working at microsoft so whatever changes we make uh, go go back upstream and that is like really important so i would say it is a multi pronged approach like you know enable on our own platforms uh, uh, release our own source code that is built from scratch and also enable and partner because it's not just about uh, you know releasing the source code because i've seen this approach with many uh i won't name the organization because you know this is getting recorded it would get me in trouble but i have used many such software and i'm sure other panelists as well where uh the organizations and many of them are large organization just throw uh, the source code over the wall and say hey open source and there's hardly any documentation uh and uh, you know hardly any like tests or any way how to use it like there's no community so i i think the community part is also important and i think microsoft understands that um so i think that is that i would say that, that is a profound cultural change uh, that we have seen and again like you know azure also does support open source quite heavily uh, in its various forms uh, thanks unai uh, i think ramesh kind of uh, uh, mentioned it in a nice way right i mean as, as organization when you start you start using and then start contributing and you actually start creating your own open source projects <laughs> so uh, that brings us to like what kind of initiatives are organizations taking in uh, in your organization to kind of uh, uh do for us right i mean uh, so at what stage you are in at this point up now you at the youth stage contribution stage or create stage okay or uh, uh if you have like do you have any plans to kind of consciously try and move from one stage to other stage if we can start with ramesh uh sure thanks sir so um yeah uh, uh yeah we 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 are at between somewhere between the contribute and the create stage now Uh, and we want to uh, we have a lot of uh, initiatives lined up to push for the create stage uh, so uh, to to go back 3 4 years right um, first of all uh, one of the biggest initiatives was to create consciousness for open source and how people can contribute uh, because especially if you have a lot of junior developers uh, in your uh, in your company you just have to make sure that uh, you create that sense of security and say say that it's perfectly safe to contribute and it is uh, this and but as long as you have the discipline to make sure that uh, uh, you contribute in the right way uh, uh, we are okay with that right so that's kind of consciousness is what uh, we have been doing in the last two years uh, trust me we also started incentivizing uh, open source right we used to call out uh, folks who have contributed to open source in our all hands in our all in, uh, in our uh, all the engineers meetings etc so that basically is uh, the, those small things create the behavioral changes that are needed for people to both use as well as contribute back and at uh, at the company level we also have initiatives basically to find out if anything that we are doing needs to be uh, part of the creation open source creation uh, point of view right uh, we know that it takes a lot of time as when i called out right it's not just about throwing the code over the wall there has to be engineering discipline there has to be documentation discipline there also has to be support discipline if somebody asks a question there has to be a community which will back it up so that's why it, uh, the creation process is slightly uh, uh, non linear when it comes to how we want to grow open source in the company but we are getting there so i would say we are somewhere between contribution and creation phase we have a few little creations to our name but we want to definitely uh, uh, do more Thanks so much. That's quite interesting. Uh, maybe uh, we can go to Mukund next. Yeah. Um, some 
I think a lot of us follow similar models in the tech sector, right? Uh, we are also, uh, if you know, uh, Hotstart scale is incredibly high and we are very much event driven in a lot of uh, things. We have started contributing or we have contributed to things like changes in Terraform and Ambassador and some of those uh, open source things, but we can do more and we plan to do more and uh, incentivizing by recognition of the contribution is one uh, uh, one thing that we are looking at. And also, um, again, this is, uh, I can't go to the hot stars specific uh, things, but um, making it part of uh, uh, the process of uh, uh, rewarding over the employees is one of the main goals of uh, how do you make that as a like a KR or a key OKR of the uh, uh, leaders and all of that is a standard way that people do it. Um, and that is what we will also look at and how to improve the uh, contribution back to the open source community. Um, and uh, the challenges are always the same thing, right? Uh, it's uh, it's not, uh, and that is the uh, block also that uh, we want to uh, cross, which is a mental block. Okay, if I com commit to the open source, that means it has to go through that whole process, that cycle. So you need to be able to balance your business goals and your uh, uh, the contribution to open source community kind of a thing. It's more of a platform, more of a brand building. How do you balance the two is, uh, is always a challenge. And recognition, making it part of the journey of the engineer uh, making it uh, a way to uh, recognize the people who are contributing these are the standard ways that we know and i'm here to figure out if there is something different that we can do right um, if there's something uh, different then we can also incorporate that it's uh, um, that's one of the reasons i'm here to hear uh, listen to you folks and see uh, what else can be done to move the needle especially from india thanks mukund uh and let's uh, hear from Rishi uh, what uh, Infos thinks of that. Hey, thanks, Anand. Uh, so let me talk about it, what kind of things uh, I believe is uh, important from the FOSS initiative perspective. See, there are three dimensions to this. One is consuming the open source and then uh, building and releasing the uh, new open source and then contributing to the community uh, projects also. So all three are extremely important. And as uh, uh, Ramesh mentioned that uh, uh, there are a few uh, processes which we need to define. And those processes, especially when you are in the uh, services space, then definitely you need to protect all the IPs and you need to protect all the proprietary information for your clients and for company also. So you have to have that stringent process in place so that you can uh, give the proper approvals and then only things will go out of uh, your network. So we keep doing contributions to uh, multiple communities. There are passionate uh, open source contributors and uh, I'm especially involved in uh, events like industry events you might, might have heard like uh, KubeCon, or maybe Hacktable Face, or maybe Call for Code. These events, uh, which are there, and then a lot of hackathons uh, I conduct personally. So in these hackathons, we build a lot of solutions, and these solutions uh, generally help to solve some of the business problems. And let me tell you that the first choice of all the people who are building these solutions, they look for the open source, because it has to be quick, and it has to be very economic also from the investment perspective. People don't want to, uh, they cannot put a lot of money over there and they cannot go for a proprietary software. So uh, hackathons and these events uh, and contributions plus the contribution process, I think all these things are part of our culture. And uh, we are trying hard that we should have an open source culture in the company, not just uh, uh, one or two contributions or some small uh, software contribution. There should be a culture. And I will tell you the reason uh, for that, because from services industry perspective, uh, from services perspective particularly, 
See, I want to share one stat. 58% of software, 58% of software used by the organizations are open source. And number two, 66% organizations take open source first approach to modernize the applications. So you can see a great uh, potential to uh, work with the clients for their modernization journey. Over to you, Anand. Yeah. Thanks, Rishi. Uh, let's uh, uh, hear from Jyoti. Sure. Thank you, Anand. Um, I think I agree with everything Mukund, Ramesh, and Rishi you have talked about. There's just a couple of things I would like to add on top. One is just to emphasize on the community built out part. There are uh, there in, in organizations, there are always few people who are way more passionate than others. And, and, and what I've seen and experienced is that, that getting these people together from various parts of the company, putting them together and encourage and, and help them thrive a community of open source contribution helps a lot. Um, these people who are so passionate, they not only consume, they encourage, they themselves create, and that creates a ripple effect to the rest of the, the rest of the engineering talent in the company as well. So these are the people, Rishi, to your point, who 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 go after hackathons, do these open source days, and also participate and and contribute to cube cons and 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 therefore encourage and 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 let other people truly believe that this is this is possible while staying in in enterprise and and that that actually helps out because of the fact that that to your point that there is training required to to be able to do contributions which are totally worthy in the sense that you're not throwing code over the wall there is there is support there is investment which is required from the companies and leaders as well because it's just not about writing good code it's about making sure that there is investment as well so so open source it, it requires a community and then it requires a, a, a leadership commitment as well from the business side that we will continue to put the investment in which is required to maintain what we are open sourcing and 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 that that both of these put together truly create the thriving culture that, that we are looking for. Because I have had scenarios wherein our PMs have said, you know what, I cannot wait for, for another month uh, for you to release something. I need it now and, and you can worry about it later if you want to open source. And then we have to put our foot down and, and, and fight it out and say, no, this is not something that can wait. We will do it right and we will do it with open sourcing. Sometimes we win, sometimes we don't. But, but, that's, but that's what the journey is about. And, and that's how the, the contributions thrive. Thanks, Yadid. That's quite interesting. So, Vinak, you already mentioned about uh, the uh, Microsoft journey. Like, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, a couple more things, uh, actually. So um, uh, m multiple people on the panel talked about, you know, uh, the the organization in incentive structure, right? So inside Microsoft, we have this OKR called contributing to the success of others. Uh, and a contribution towards open source actually counts towards that. Now, that's a huge incentive, right? Because uh, that shows up in your performance view. It is recognized uh, and uh, also actually you know there is there are there is an internal huge internal community that is doing open source and I, one of the profound differences as i mentioned earlier also is the amount of lawyering that is required to release open source code in microsoft uh, it's become super easy to contribute uh, and also incorporate some of these uh, there are very good guidelines uh, there is uh, there is there are people that you can reach out to uh, so that internal community is like super important and this internal community is also very porous right because the internal community also engages with the external community right so if you see like uh how it is like uh, microsoft has been a part of various kind of foundations right uh, i mean it was kind of unthinkable maybe like 15 years back but uh like the linux foundation we are one of the members um then there is the cncf as well uh because we contribute heavily to kubernetes the most recent one uh, and the most interesting one also personally because i'm interested in rust is also microsoft is part of the rust uh, foundation which was created like literally i think two weeks back um so that was good and uh, one last thing i want to mention is like microsoft research also right which is like the research wing of the company uh, one of the models for actually going to market uh, is also now open sourcing whatever is the research so which was which is quite new in fact one of our programs where we work with social impact 
um, uh, with, with with social impact startups and nonprofits called Amplify, uh, along with co-licensing and uh, just licensing. Open sourcing is one of the models in which Microsoft open sources the code and then it is uh, you know available for the startup to actually incorporate. Uh, one last thing I want to uh, you know because it was not covered in the panel that I want to talk about is uh, in in an earlier uh, in an earlier job uh, when I was like the CTO of Zoomcar prior to Microsoft. Uh, we also engaged with the open source community in a one different way, which was uh, we were heavy users of Metabase. And uh, because Metabase is written in Clojure, uh, we did not have much internal expertise in Clojure. So we actually worked with uh, polyglot.network and actually built a capability that we wanted on top, of, uh, on top of Metabase. We used it internally. We paid open source developers and that uh, code was incorporated. Uh, some of the code at least was incorporated upstream. So there are various ways in which you can uh, work, right? I mean, it's not just like, you know, starting an Apache project, but also you can pay developers to actually add features, which also, also something that can be a start for many uh, enterprises as well. Thanks, Vinay. So uh, I want to have a question for Rishi here. Um, so uh, being a large organization, and then uh, being in services industry, uh, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of fear about uh, doing anything open source. It may have to go through a lot of approval process and all that. So how is it in Infosys? Like, are there any like active uh, uh, push to kind of change that or make people contribute to open source projects? So, Anand, I would like to speak with uh, what is my view, how this can be protected, particularly from services point of view. So every information we are dealing with uh, or any individual is dealing with within the organization, if they are working for a client, it has to remain within those compliance uh, limitations. I mean, we can we have to comply with whatever we have committed to the client. When we are going to make anything open source, yes, we do need to have a formal structure for that. So you should have a small, uh, you should have a team who is going to do the approvals completely. For example, if you are making a software as open source, so first you would like to check with the uh, software written should be original. I mean, they should write their own code. Second, then it will go to the managers or the uh, respective leaders to check that this is not, we are not going to violate any proprietary uh, things for our client or anybody. That check has to happen. And then we look at from the company perspective also that uh, whatever we are going to open source it should be really open source which we want to make and then after that only you can make it uh, open source there are a lot of other checks also which you require to do from uh, information security perspective also so especially when you are working for a large organization and uh, you are uh, working in the services side it is really tough and many times people feel, oh, OK, there is a guideline to make the things open source. So I can make it open source. And they will just make it open source, or they will put it on the repository. And then they will come back and say, oh, I have made it open source because there is a guideline to make it open source. But guideline is to follow the proper process. So it is not easy. And there is a very stringent process which people have to follow. And then only we should make it uh, open source. <laughs> Thanks, Rishi. So I want to kind of uh, point out something here. Like, so it's really important. I understand it's really important to embrace a culture to uh, open source, uh, and create a culture in the team. Okay, but still, there uh, the open source contributions are typically done at the uh, uh, engineers' its own time, not really part of the work that they do as part of the office, right? So, so, so there's a difference between. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not important. It's really important to kind of create the culture in the organization. But it's also, I think, organizations can do a lot more by actually maybe like promoting existing open source projects. Maybe there are some projects which are really very uh, important for their organization. Okay, so even though they may the organization may not be in a position to kind of contribute from the developers internally, it can actually uh, support other developers working on that. Something like what Vinay has mentioned, right? I mean, can can hire people from there as in a contract to kind of develop those features, <laughs> or there are more things actually uh, in open source, not just kind of contributing code. You can actually support uh, projects and come out the community building and come out, uh, support the conferences. There's so many things that actually can be done. Okay. The other thing is actually uh, what open source projects can actually also, uh, the engineers working on interesting stuff using open projects, you can actually go out and actually speak about events in the community. That's also 
a kind of contribution to open source. So one thing that I kind of uh, note feel is like uh, as the organization becomes large, the participation from the wow. engineers in the community events uh, becomes less and less. So I want to kind of get your perspective on like what do you think about that? I mean, uh, uh, please feel to so, uh, yeah. So, so Anand, I think Jyoti touch based it uh, up to some extent, and I would like to expand uh, extend the same point here. Uh, see, when it comes to open source contributions, uh, it's not that you will deploy 10 people on a project and uh, they will start doing the contribution and you can make it open source. No, that's not the way. What you need to look at is you will figure out within your team or within your uh, uh, group of people that few people are very passionate about doing the coding. Like I want to say that uh, uh, there is a community Postgre. Can you please go and contribute to Postgre community? Let me tell you that out of 1,000 people, you will find only one who will be willing to contribute to Postgre community. And the reason will be, see, it's an old code. People have been writing that code for so many years, understanding that code and going through that code, it will take a whole lot of time. What I have seen working, if people are passionate about one particular software, they want to, uh, they, ha they have expertise in that software. They want to understand that how this software works. Then definitely they can contribute to that. And I completely agree with you uh, that it's not only the source writing. I mean, it is not only the code writing, but also they can participate in the reviews. They can write some documentation also. They can do the testing also of some of the uh, code which is written by other people. So it is a matter of how we motivate the people that leadership point uh, comes here. And uh, as uh, I think Mukund mentioned some time back that uh, uh, it's a individual branding also when you are going to see your software, your software code, which is going to work at some level, global level, and you see that it is working and you, you find that, oh, this functionality was implemented by me. You feel that, yes, I have done something great and it is accepted at the global level. That kind of code you have written, that kind of performance, that kind of quality you have delivered. And that can be by passionate people only. That cannot be done by you will just assign to somebody and that guy will do. That is what is my view. Thanks. Anyone else want to kind of uh, have any opinion on that? I just want to say it's a brave thing, Anand, to open source. It, and just to add to, to Rishi's point, it is not everybody's uh, nature because everybody is not brave by nature. So, um, so as as the as leadership team in the companies, it's our job to 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 find that talent, encourage that uh, that talent to be brave to go out and open source not only just the code but also also to just go speak um and and provide reviews write write small features as well it's not about creating whole projects sometimes it's just about uh, that sense of fulfillment that comes in as an engineer and it, it's just amazing it as leaders all we got to do is to just push these people for the first couple times and and then that passion will kick in because that's the, the it's the adrenaline that comes in that so many people are using what what you have contributed and that leads to um that leads to this whole chain and um and and the bravery has to has to start in in a small setup, but but once the once the people try it out, it it becomes very 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 encouraging for them. The only thing I would emphasize again is that that the the support is super important. Um, the the leadership has to support because it does need the investment. It does need the it does need that additional support for these passionate engineers to go out and and do what what we truly believe is that's a contribution at open source. Thanks, Shyoti. Uh, Vinayak, you want uh, Yeah, please. Yeah, so I quickly wanted to add a point, right? Uh, I think there are a bunch of startups and engineering leaders here. So uh, so when I was a startup, I actually used open source contribution as a great hiring strategy, right? So we told, uh, at least in a couple of organizations that I was like, uh, I told people that, hey, you can continue to contribute to open source, just come and work with us. That, that really helped. Uh, we also looked at uh, uh, you know see because there is a war for talent right and it, the any 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 particular edge that you can have uh, especially for passionate people right because software writing software is a very creative process 
and if somebody is writing uh, as jyoti said it's a brave thing to open source if somebody is actually gone through that barrier and that pain to actually open source put themselves out there i think that adds a notch to one their resume and it's a for me it's a marker that this person is high uh, high quality right and i have used it as a incentive to hire good people i have also used it as a incentive organizational incentive to uh, to uh, motivate uh, people as well right uh, and I, I give the example of microsoft but you don't need to be with like you know large organizations to uh, to actually recognize in in some way right like maybe uh, and recognition can be you know send it out in a newsletter uh, uh, even some and it does not need to be in some sense because we talked about the uh, uh, importance of community it can be somebody who's uh, who has a very high ranking on stack overflow some of the people that i know they do not contribute a lot in terms of code but they have a very high ranking for certain softwares or certain skills on uh, stack overflow for me that ranks really high so you send that signal while hiring you send that signal while doing performance reviews and you will see that the culture slowly changes thanks vinay i think that's hiring is one of the point i actually want to kind of bring up i mean i'll i'll, I'll get back to that point uh, uh, after uh, we we go over to other panelists uh, mukund you were saying you want to say something yeah so like a dot star right uh, you mentioned a couple of things around uh, you don't have to only be contributing to code um, so we do uh, before the covid situation struck us we were hosting a bunch of open source uh, meetups at uh, the campus now that has all stopped and uh, that has probably taken a hit on the open source community and uh, uh, the whole uh, networking that used to happen before uh, more than a year back um i remember back in us also we used to i used to attend go to google campus or something like that for birds uh, birds of feather kind of uh, things and all that those there are i try to look there are not many of those things in india and in bangalore those if there are those things i think a lot of uh, uh, the corporates uh, corporations will definitely love to host because that's the easier part of it we could actually put in money from our side to uh, fund some of these uh, uh, networking events and things of those sort the more difficult part is actually as you mentioned uh, getting the engineers to actually contribute because um, the way we execute on the business goals and uh, the amount of effort and time it takes to contribute to open source that sometimes feels a longer head until the leadership is able to clear the argument that this is part of our overall OPR and things of that sort so and that is the big uh, thing so uh, from an open source community if there is good work going on i mean posting getting corporate sponsorships these things are something that we can always do i would like to hire uh, from the open source community but it's uh, that's also a challenge to find those folks because they won't be found uh, they don't mean necessarily have mention it on your resume and doesn't come to your uh, talent team and things like that so we need to actually go through the contributors list of the open source projects and bring them on board i think we'll ask anam yeah. thanks mukund uh, uh, i think ramesh uh, also wanted to say something sure uh, so i wanted to talk about the meetups which mukund covered so i won't uh, belabor that point Uh, but so there are two ways we'll have to basically make open source a comfortable topic at the table in companies right especially startups right one is to basically go bottoms up where you have meetups where you capture the engineers and talk about the uh, the the ground level details right so we thought we should do the other way also which is basically the top down so we uh, so we have we have uh, i mean we don't want to call it an event we have a a, a program called sas at scale uh, that freshworks does Uh, periodically, at least once a quarter, where we want to talk about how we have scaled our SaaS business with open source technologies, right? So we had, let's say, we have topics. We in one quarter we talk about Rails at scale, so that we can break the cliches top down, where uh, people believe that uh, open source technologies, I mean, or I mean, for example, Rails or is not suited for a certain uh, category of uh, businesses or certain category of use cases. We want to break that myth also and basically show uh, where you can influence top down in some cases where. Uh, things are ruled out uh, when it comes to certain new skills we want to break that as well so we are uh, doing that uh, initiative also through our sas at scale uh, programs so 
Yeah, thanks so much. That's quite interesting. Okay. The other point I want to kind of mention is like, let's say, uh, uh, for example, uh, you uh, companies kind of built pretty much on rails. Okay. So things like contributing to uh, the Ruby conferences uh, in India, etc., might also be a good point. I mean, whatever infrastructure or the core, uh, which is components that you're actually using at your organization, and promoting that community in India is probably a good idea as well. I guess. Yeah. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah, so uh, I want to kind of take on the the hiring uh, point that Vinayak mentioned. Okay, so so one thing that can, if you look at the students, right? I mean, uh, the industry kind of uh, the hiring uh, gives very strong message to students what kind of things are important uh, for them. So when you kind of look at uh, any of the large organizations that are hiring, the focus is actually on algorithms and people actually focus on actually. Uh, uh, competitive coding and all those kind of stuff. And uh, for example, when you actually ask a couple of students, like, what do you want to do for next semester? The usual answer is they want to kind of learn C++ and actually spend time on competitive coding. But you're actually not spending actually time on actually learning these open source technologies, learn Python, Go, or actually build some stuff. No, their interest is not really on building stuff. They're actually interested in actually scoring high on competitive coding. So I think as an industry, we are giving a wrong signal. And that's probably hurting for us. Quite a lot. Uh, I want to kind of hear your opinions on that. Yeah, Mukul, please. So, you have a valid point, right? But again, it is a question of scale. Uh, like, uh, the uh, we as in the industry um, and the uh, universities in India and have to actually look up to that that it is not just competitive coding that. Uh, gets you into uh, good uh, placements. Um, if you look at it, if we today, if I go to the campus and say that how many of your students in uh, even top uh, colleges are actually contributing to open source, I may not get anyone. So that becomes a challenge. I think your point is valid. The message is to go both ways, both to the colleges as well as to the uh hiring firms that let us start looking for people who are contributing to the open source and as uh, vinayak said if if i find people who can if you look at any of the uh, top colleges who come to uh, top uh, companies that go to colleges the coding bar is low actually yeah, so the uh, fresh grad uh, coding bar is generally much, uh, much smaller. Once you are able to code, then you start doing the interview process. And during that process, if if I am able to find somebody has contributed to open source, I will definitely grab him or her. That is absolutely a gem kind of a thing, right? Um, so that culture has to be understood also by the uh, university. And you're right. At some somehow we need to communicate that to the colleges as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. Like, it's a chicken like problem. There's also a problem with academia. Uh, but uh, uh, also, if industry can actually start signaling that it's uh, open source contributions are valued, I think that will start uh, make some change. Yeah. I'm not trying to say that it's a problem with the academia or problem with us. Because we are also, uh, as corporations, we are not contributing as much as we should do to the uh, open source. So we are continuing that uh, debt, uh, as we say, right? Uh, we need to start, as you said, right from the universities. Uh, they have a strict regiment. Okay, this is data structures class. This is operational uh, uh, operating systems class. This is programming in C plus plus. This is this. There is nowhere uh, thing where a project on the open source uh, that we need to write things there, and the uh, students are to be brought up in that mindset. Yeah, have like, please go on. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, uh, taking a longer view, right? I think uh, if you if you looked at the 1990s and uh, I think there's some disturbance. Uh, yeah, if you looked at the 1990s and early 2000s, if you could, if you were in an engineering discipline and you could use a computer, you were hired for a programming job, right? Then it has come to you know people who could program a little bit and you know at least could write code. From there, it has moved to a competitive coding, right? I think the next step is that not only just competitive coding, but something that's useful to people, right? So if you look, take a longer term view, we have evolved. Now the fall fallacy here is that we're comparing with the West. 
right which which have had a larger amount of infrastructure for the longest period of time they have had the investment to do many of our colleges i know for a fact do not have that infrastructure but because of the internet uh, the way things are moving actually it's much easier to learn uh, so i would say that yes i mean we can still uh, i mean rather than beating up ourselves saying that hey we have not done in the past i think it is a good time to start because if you look at it historically from a socio economic point of view from an education point of view we have come a long way from somebody who could use a computer could you know could be hired to point to to a point where people who are doing competitive coding are being hired right so the signal is saying that hey competence matters only we need to say now competence what is competence but competence is that also you write code which other people can use and not just competitive coding where you solve a problem right uh, so the so the level of access of information the level of infrastructure has gone up i think this might be right time right time to do that kind of signaling from the industry that's what i personally believe Sorry, Anand, you're on mute. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Vinay. Uh, Jyoti, you want to go next? Yeah, I just wanted to add on to what Mukund and uh, and Vinay mentioned is on what enterprises can take responsibility of. Like, like in the in uh, ten years ago, um, most of the organizations, into it including, used to prescribe that when you're coming in and you're doing the programming round, this is the language you're going to code in. And and same for the college hires as well. And from that to today, it the, that notion has gone, which means that that we are saying that this is the problem. You choose the technology that you would like to code in, and then we 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 just want to we would evaluate you in what you have used for both college hires as well as for the for the later hires from the market. That's one. And then obviously the second part is that, and, and that sets up the clear the 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 clarity in academia as well that there are companies that are not prescribing the language and it's okay for students to pick up what they choose to be the their comfort level and and then come and talk about that one. Then the second one is for the for the lateral hires, and I completely agree with with you, Vinay. That when I see resumes and those the resumes have a GitHub link on top of it, that's it. Half the battle is done because somebody who is brave enough to be able to put their code right on their resume and say, "This is who I am. Go check me out, and then let me know whether you would like to hire me." I think that's. That that makes a huge amount of uh, difference to the to the candidature, and and then again within the company as well as we are evaluating somebody on for their performance, not only not only at the end of the year, but every time somebody takes this stance that yes, I'm going to go take an extra. a uh, couple months to complete something and open source it that behavior is rewarded and then it reward it's rewarded right then and there and it shows up in the performance cycle as well and and that gets the word out that as part of the hiring and candidature and performance evaluation these these this mindset and these candidates are celebrated and and that also helps out in setting up the culture thanks shruti uh So I want to kind of uh, I think we're kind of almost uh, close to the time, end time. So uh, I want to kind of ask like uh, uh, how can organizations like Fortunate help uh, to rush your force? I mean, can there be a participation between industry and organizations like Fortunate to uh, <coughs> help for the force journey? I mean, is there anything like organizations can do? i would def say definitely there are there are few opportunities one is like i can say that that as as an in intuit we would love to have you come over as part of our open source day like have force united come and and run maybe cup maybe a hackathon or 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 foster uh, um maybe a talk or just a, a a challenge between multiple people just to say what would what is it working what is not working so it would be really nice to have it would would be really nice to have this community come together not only from force united but from other organizations as well and all of these like minded people coming together and 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 my ask from force united would be to to be that channel to be that facilitation uh, that facilitating channel for for all of us to come together and our teams and our and, and our technology organization to feel comfortable that this is how they are going to go ahead the other um, the other thing i seen is that that anand 
because you you are the you, your your team is the horizontal team that goes across these multiple startups as well the the that ecosystem maybe the organizations large and the medium enterprises they all can come together and and work with these startups to to see what would make sense for them to thrive and then form formulate some of these projects that our people could contribute to so i think i think just just the just the glue just help us be the glue um that that would be my ask thanks jyoti that's quite insightful uh, yeah uh, anyone else want to say something yeah uh, ramesh please go on. yeah uh, for a start your telegram channel probably by itself is the most useful uh, piece of uh, information that all developers can use right there's lots of stuff right anybody who wants to uh, learn more about open source and what is happening around the world including uh, what are the options to uh, look for when uh, uh when i'm evaluating something i think that replicating that inside a company would probably be a great start for us uh, because that is going to drive change over a longer time because a lot of people who want to do it but are kind of uh, lacking that mentorship or support to do it i think that's where creating that internal community like like what you have created for force united across india would definitely help and that's where you can help us for sure thanks ramesh yeah yeah uh, arish please go on yeah so i just want to extend the point uh, points mentioned by jyoti and ramesh so organizing the events like uh, hackathons or maybe some other events which we can do i think it is important to go in a phased manner probably we can look at it uh, some of the ideathons we can run initially we can involve large number of uh, uh, students or the uh, experts from the industry then we can go for hackathon then we can come up with some of the solutions which later on can be sponsored and certain things can be derived from the open source community perspective and that way we can come up to that stage where we can have lot many good products uh, just like cncf what is doing for cloud native similar thing can be done for open source through this channel also this is what is my thinking <laughs> yeah thanks rishi i think uh, like you said uh, i think it's important to kind of also kind of keep uh, the fast ecosystem in india in mind rather, I mean, I mean, it's important to kind of contribute to organizations like cncf as well but also it's important to keep in mind uh, the fast ecosystem in india uh, and see uh, any of the actions can uh, help ecosystem directly yeah yeah uh, we'd like you saying you want to say something uh yeah one last thing i think uh, totally a left field option is uh, maybe uh, if they would that uh, any of from uh, many of these programmers from uh, you know startups and enterprise could reach out to uh, have, so we used to have like uh, on irc we used to have hash linux india hash bsd india for a long period of time that's i've been on linux mailing list for like more than i just realized while talking here that i've been using linux for 25 years uh this being 21 so i started in 96 uh in sl using slackware uh and i used to hang around on all of these right so what has happened is i think that kind of uh, we have used to have fast.in and other conferences also there we could interact with you know uh people who have been using linux for a long period of time and we kind of kind of grew up together that sense of community fast.united uh fast united is able to provide either by mentor matching program or through conferences i think that would be good because uh highlighting i think the most important thing is highlighting those road models that people can follow yeah thanks vinayak yeah we can please go on uh i've always been uh, looking out for uh, some of these uh, early things that uh, these communities that exist in other parts of the world uh where corresponding chapters uh is there some of those that can be brought in in india or it is there highlight them with them and say the force websites and things like that as one central place for open source at least in india and then now uh, these guys can other uh, people can reach out uh, like for what uh, uh, ramesh and rishi were saying mentors for contributing generally it is the writing blog that you want to block or uh, to start community uh, And that is where the uh, the force can work. Yeah, 
uh, thanks, Mukund. I think uh, so. There are many organizations kind of working on FOSS in India. I think uh, I wouldn't say like FOSS in India is the uh, only one. But uh, what we are trying to do at FOSS in India is one thing that we're trying to do is kind of um, uh, create a list of all FOSS events happening uh, every month, and we started kind of writing a blog post so that it's kind of easily discoverable. I think it's very uh, early thing, but I'm sure like with a lot more can be done. Okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I think uh, a lot of people, I'm sure, like have a lot of questions. I think I'll uh, we'll take some uh, five ten minutes uh, and see if any audience want to kind of ask any questions. And uh, uh, before closing, yeah, uh, anyone like, you can please unmute and speak, or you can put it on the chat window. Uh, uh, any of it is fine. Uh, anyone you want to speak, please uh, unmute and yeah, speak. Yeah, I can quickly go. You know, uh, so yeah. I, I I I see a lot of uh, diversity in you know how strategic forces, right? Microsoft has publicly now backed and you know put the money uh, where the mouth is, uh, and I I see Freshworks is also doing like you know I, I think it is very strategically important uh, at different companies at different levels, right? So for, so I want to understand like how how has like how important is for strategically, right? While we all understand the value and uh, 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 you know the value force delivers, but is it part of the consciousness when taking strategic decisions? Yeah, who wants to take that? Yeah, thanks, Rishi. Yeah, yeah. So if you ask me, I think open source. Whenever you want to do innovation, the first option you think about is the open source. And today, every company is looking for doing something innovative, something new, and they want to modernize something at least. So in my opinion, I think for us, it is uh, uh, one of the new service offerings, and it is very much strategic. So I think for everyone, it should be. It should be there. Uh, without this, I think survival is not possible. Thanks, Rishi. Anyone else want to answer that? OK. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, Rishi, uh, Rishabh, do you have anything else to add to that? OK, probably not. OK, anyone else who uh, wants to speak? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Navarro. I had a question regarding the uh, point about hiring scenario. Um, so I'm a fairly recent graduate. I just graduated three years back. Uh, I had this question, like, since you mentioned that when you go to campuses, you don't find ample talent who are working on open source. Um, I'm at least fortunate enough to come from an alma mater where we had open source contributors, uh, plenty of them. Now the question is, uh, what I have seen on ground is that uh, whenever firms do come for recruitment, they don't mention anywhere that uh, although they are willing to go through the process of competitive programming and tests, but they do have this opportunity that anyone who wants to highlight their open source contributions can do so. Uh, and then get through the process as well if they don't want to do uh, competitive programming. Now, the assumption here is uh, a person would be able to write good code. I'm not saying a person won't be able to write good code. Um, so don't you think that's like a chicken and egg problem? And how do we want to solve it? Uh, is there a feasible solution? Uh, thanks, Ambarnit. I think it's an interesting point. I mean. <laughs> Uh, it's like uh, it's, it's, it's like the, when all the companies are signaling that they value competitive coding more than open source contributions. Uh, having publicly acknowledging that they value that, I think it's uh, probably a first step. I mean, I want to kind of hear uh, any one of you want to say anything about it. Yeah, thank you. From uh, my own past experience, not necessarily at Hotstar, uh, I think uh, both Yahoo, Inmobi, uh, I worked in a lot of other companies. And even in the US, it's uh, competitive programming will only take you to some extent. The only thing is that uh, it's one of the channels that the companies are actually applying to select people. Uh, if you if you put in uh, that you are contributed to open source, at how do you scale it at uh, in the, during the recruitment process in the Campus is a problem statement that needs to be solved, right? How do you validate that the contribution that you or she did, he or she did, is uh, significant? Does it 
match up to what is required. There's a lot of other things. Mostly, uh, if the person has done a lot of contribution, they will clear some of the not necessarily complete coding, but the coding rounds that happen. So it just it definitely gets covered in my opinion that if a person has been contributing in open source, generally they will clear the initial rounds of the good companies uh, coding rounds. That is my take. Thanks, Mukul. Yeah, please your seat. Yeah, just to add to that, I do acknowledge that yes, it is a problem, but there are there are there are ways to to solve and and work around these. Like I would like to mention one thing that Intuit was trying recently was to to ask these students to open contribute to to maybe a couple or a few of the frameworks. Like in this case, uh, it was a karate framework that we invited students to contribute to, and we actually made a hire purely based on their contribution. So, so, so a student made the contribution and we made an offer after that. Having said that, it, it, it was an experiment, but I do want to mention that, that these are the things that could potentially loosen that gap, uh, close that gap that we have between what students feel but and what industry is looking so for. <laughs> Looks like there is someone uh, speaking. Yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, thanks, Shruti. I think it's an, uh, it's an interesting thing. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, so uh, maybe one thing that it maybe tries to kind of see um, uh, when people kind of do this FOSS events, right? I mean, uh, or FOSS hackathons, etc. Maybe kind of uh, see if that's a channel where you can actually hire, because you actually get to see uh, FOSS contributors coming there, and then maybe kind of make that as a channel for your hiring. That may be an interesting thing. Yeah, Rishi, please go on. So, Anand, I have been uh, doing a lot of hackathons, and generally, when I am doing hackathons, these hackathons are not one or two days hackathons. I generally go for four weeks hackathon and the idea is to involve the talent and the idea is that the people who may be involved in uh, multiple projects they also should come and participate in the hackathon motivation for them is learning a new technology and building a new solution whatever they cannot do in their current project it works very nicely so conducting hackathons, giving the opportunity for people to learn new technology, build a solution which they want to build, not what their client is looking for. I think that's a great motivation. And then contribution to open source is definitely another part which will give them a lift that they will be picked by because they have already set up their brand in the global market and they will be picked from there. So I think hackathons and these kind of uh, events or the competitive events will be great opportunity and uh, uh, i keep picking the people from uh, these events we do it yeah thanks rishi so we have uh, like two more minutes before closing i'll take one last question uh, from the channel <laughs> unless there are more coming uh, uh, which fast projects are your team most excited about from rishab yeah who wants to take this Uh, Maybe all of us, yeah. Uh, Air yeah. is gone. Yeah. See, there are many, but Kubernetes is the best one. Everyone wants to contribute to Kubernetes nowadays. <laughs> True. Yeah. 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 What's your take? When... Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, being, uh, being a big contributor on the Kubernetes side and the Argo, Argo projects, I think that's that's one of our biggest ones as well. In addition to our testing framework, Karate, I think those are the, the two that, that we are most excited about. Can I speak? Yeah. Look, I'm trying to say something different or maybe it is a lower. Look, there is a Mac Alliance and it works well even for the uh, commercial software. Okay, I make this software and it integrates this way. All the system integrators need to create a Mac Alliance of the open source software. The integration of the open Sorry, there seems to be an issue. Uh... Hey, uh, there seems to be an issue. Uh, couldn't hear you. 
Could you please uh, say it again? Or uh, are your voice is a problem? Can you please type it in the public chat? That also works. I think the question was more around uh, should we have a framework for integrating FOSS projects and create a blueprint, which the Mac Alliance does so well? So I think that's the that's the question which Andresh had. Yeah, I mean, uh, sure. I don't think we have kind of uh, uh, clarity and you know, answer to that. Uh, uh, any of us can answer that at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think listen, uh, Nadika has an on question. I think I'll take the last one and stop there. So, uh, are there attempts to take FOSS outside the tech community? Uh, uh, yes, I mean, uh, uh, FOSS Unity is especially trying to kind of uh, see how we can take FOSS to help uh, nonprofits uh, 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 be more effective, etc. But I don't think that's relevant for this uh, discussion. So we we'll probably kind of continue the discussion in the Telegram group if required. Uh, thanks for asking. Uh, thanks, everyone. I think we're pretty much off the mark. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, all the panelists, for uh, joining and sharing all your insights. Uh, it, it was uh, quite uh, enlightening to kind of hear all of you speak about uh, 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 FOSS, you know, organization and then uh, intentions to kind of uh, promote more FOSS. Thanks a lot and we hope to do more such events and uh, hope to see you again. Thank you. Thanks everyone for participating. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks.